More than 280,000 women serve in the United States military. By joining the military, they now risk their safety in more ways than they realized when they signed up. Today, women soldiers serving in Afghanistan and Iraq are more likely to be sexually assaulted by a fellow serviceman than to be killed in combat. When you report something, you better be prepared for the repercussions. If a man gets accused of rape, it's a setup. The woman's lying. I could choose to report it, but if I wasn't, if you know, if they found that what I was saying wasn't to be truthful, then that I would be reduced in rank. You could lose your rate, you could lose rank, you could lose your school if you file a false report. So do you want to file a report? <laughs> Even with the rape kit and everything, and, and the person, my friend catching him rape me, they still don't believe me. I reported it two different times to my squad leader. And he told me that there was nothing he could do about it because I didn't have any proof. They actually did charge me with adultery. I wasn't married. He was. They took me before my, my lieutenant commander. He says, do you think this is funny? And I said, what do you mean? He's like, is this all a joke to you? I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, you're the third girl to report rape this week. Are you guys like all in cahoots? Do you think this is a game? All of those stories are from The Invisible War, a new award-winning documentary that exposes the shocking epidemic of sexual assault in the United States military. Not only do these women suffer the horrors of rape, but they are often shamed, isolated, blamed, or discharged after reporting the assault. The documentary includes stories of women who served at the Marine barracks in Washington, D.C., the nation's most prestigious Marine base, the home of the Marines who stand guard at the White House. After my deployment to Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2008-2009, my commanding officer recommended me for the Marine Barracks Washington. I was excited. It was the tip of the spear as far as the Marine Corps is concerned. One of the first things I was told when I checked in was, don't wear any makeup because the Marines will think that they, you want to sleep with them. And I thought, that's just ridiculous. The atmosphere off, off the bat at, at Marine Barracks Washington was, was horrible. Um, people asked me what sexual favors had I performed to get my orders there. There was a senior officer in my command who, the first time he spoke to me, he said, female Marines here are nothing but objects for the Marines to Joining me now, producer Amy Ziering and director Kirby Dick, the makers of this amazing and shocking documentary. Uh, Amy, uh, this is shocking beyond description. Uh, the, and the fact that these stories are coming from the Marine barracks uh, in Washington, the, the Marines we see on television all the time in their full dress uniforms at the White House, not to accuse any of them in particular, but, but where they live, this is happening. Yeah, well, one of the things we noticed, Lawrence, when we started doing this research was often this is reported in the press as these anomalous situations. You know, there's a tailhook scandal or there's Aberdeen. And what we tried to just do in our film and show was, no, actually, this is systemic widespread epidemic that's going on chronic and daily in our U.S. military. And one of the ways we, we did that was by focusing in part on Marine Barracks Washington, where it's ongoing. And, and, and that was why we made a purpose of inserting those, the, those incidents in our film. In fact... Three women that we spoke with off the record at Marine Barracks Washington told me that they had actually asked repeatedly for transfers back into combat to leave that, ba that, that um, barracks. Kirby, you get the feeling when, when you think about the, the scandals that we read about that that's just, they're like speeding tickets. It's like, you know, who got pulled over for speeding today as opposed to the 10,000 cars that were going over the speed limit today. You're absolutely right. I mean, the numbers are staggering. Uh, more than this, according to the Department of Defense's own estimates, more than 19,000 men and women were sexually assaulted last year in the U.S. In military. In one year. In one year. So over the last several decades, hundreds of thousands. Is there something in military culture? Is there something in, uh, is, is this group of people chosen? from a subset of us who are more aggressive, who are then trained to be even more aggressive? 
Well, actually, most men in the military are horrified by this. They, uh, they, they are not sexual perpetrators at all. But there's a small percentage of serial perpetrators that assault again and again. And, and the military has not done enough to investigate, prosecute, and incarcerate them. And then what's worse is when these serial perpetrators leave the military with honorable discharges, they go out into society and continue to assault civilians. So this is actually starting to have some of the contours of the scandal in the Roman Catholic Church. It was probably a very small number of priests, but they were not disciplined. They were not thrown out, and the complainants were not dealt with, honestly. Yeah, the majority of service members we interviewed and spoke with, which was, you know, a very wide, wide number of them, did say that more than often than not, their commanders were good commanders and they had no problems. But this problem was once they were in a base with a commander who did not really reinforce the rules, prosecute these per perpetrators, and really hold to an absolute zero tolerance policy for any kind of sexual harassment or abuse, that's when there are problems. And I, I want to listen to what Secretary of Defense Leon Panetta said after seeing your documentary. Sexual assault has no place uh, in the military. Uh, it is a violation of everything that the U.S. military stands for. Uh, listen, I, I know Leon Panetta known a long time. He had to be horrified by this. He has taken some actions. What actions has he taken as a result of what he's seen in your documentary? Well, what he's done is he's elevated the decision to investigate and prosecute these crimes from the level of unit commander to the level of colonel or captain in the Navy. The problem is it's still within the chain of command. It needs to be moved out of the chain of command so there's no conflict of interest. What we need here is an independent arbitrator to decide whether to investigate and prosecute. And that's the way it's done in every other civilian job justice system in this country. Amy, what, what are your hopes for where we'll be on this a year from now, uh, the, once the documentary is kind of absorbed by the military? I'm sure this is going to be seen by virtually everyone in the military. Yeah, the military actually has responded extremely positively to this film. It's not an anti-military film. Every service member we spoke with said, I'm speaking up because I know the military can be better. I love the military, and I, you know, I, want, to, I want them to hear this message and only improve it. So we, um, we hope that the military will see this film, own this problem, and really take it on with the same vigor and purpose that they take on all the other things that they try and do. The women, are, are, are they using their real names in the documentary? Are they current service members? Are they mostly now retired and out of the service? They are mostly, I mean, except for one that we should in shadow, they're, they're retired and out of the service. But many of these are quite recent within the last few years. This is a problem that is not going down. It's a, it, these 19,000 numbers have been in place for the last five years. And yeah, that, that's what has shocked me about it, as I've learned about it through your documentary, is, is the size of it. It, it is a breathtakingly strange and horrifying development in our military. Well, that's why we made this film, because so few people in this country are aware of this. The military has very, done a very good job of keeping this under wraps, and it's really time to, to get out and, and have people know about this, and that's, that's why we made the film. The documentary is called Invisible War. Kirby Dick and Amy Ziering, thank you both very much for joining me tonight. You can have The Last Word online at our blog, thelastword.msnbc.com, and you can follow my tweets at Lawrence the Ed Show is up next.